Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to Simply Scrappy. It's crazy how the weeks fly by, and here we are with yet another Friday. But that means another project, some fun scrappy talk. So thanks for joining me this afternoon. Let me know uh, where you're coming in from. It's always fun to see your comments as we go. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be celebrating spring a little bit more. I have the simple page kit number four from Creative Memories. So they are giving us a little bit more lead time. So granted, St. Patrick's Day is this weekend, but we made that kit a couple of weeks ago. So they've already released Easter. I just got it in my order uh, Wednesday. It was just launched this week. So I thought we'd go ahead and put it together so that if you want it, you can grab it and get it in your cart next time that you order. And then of course, we're going to hack it, so we're going to go through the steps for recreating it with a different collection, which is always fun. And this time, I'll be a little bit more careful. So it's funny when I said hacked on the last one. I don't know what it was about that keyword. keyword. I got so much spam on the page post because of the word hacked, I realized that I won't be using that term anymore <laughs> on Facebook, on my page. It like brought in some scum from all over wanting to fix my hacking. I don't even know. It was crazy. So uh, I like the term hack. It's kind of like cracking the code. Um, I'll have to think about some other lingo uh, to use for that. But then we're going to follow up at the end by showing off some of the card kit trios that we have. Um, I do not like to spend five or six dollars on a card. And so I either buy them from other people that make them homemade or I make the card kits from Creative Memories and they're super easy and it's great to have a stash. So we are going to talk about those as we go. So I know I have a few of you joining me. Now let's go ahead and get started and we'll flip down. So this is the simple page kit number four from Creative Memories, AKA also known as April. Um, it's ironic because Easter actually falls in March this year. Um, it's on the 31st, the 28th, 31st, I think it is. So we have a March Easter, but it's the April kit. So um, you could be ready to grab any of the pictures you might need going into the holiday. You'll know that you want to grab some that you can fit four by four on if you want to adapt to those mats. And then you have some open space in between. And then you have more than that, of course. Um, as you go, I really wanted to get photos for these, but I'm going to have to go back into the <laughs> files to find some Easter pictures when the twins were little. I need to be working on their books, and so I know I have some years of Easter to go find. I've scrapped my more recent Easters, and it gets challenging because Easter now hits our spring break. And so, again, this year we will be out of town, and my kids are, you know, the babies are 14, so they're not exactly hunting for eggs, although I always still do Easter baskets. I haven't quite decided how to handle Easter um, in Seattle. So um, am I going to mail something out ahead of time? Just have a little bunny for them to find when they wake up? I don't know. I'll have to figure out something if I want to have an Easter layout for this year. So this was the kit as it was put together. We're going to go ahead and recreate it. Um, it does not take very long. They are pretty simple. So in the kit, it comes with the two base pages and then the piece of paper that we're going to um, cut apart and the sticker sheet. You definitely want to hang on um, to these directions. This is an eight and a half by 11 paper, which means it slides in perfectly into a binder. So I hope you've started a binder. If not already, you want to keep these. And when we hack it, um, I will give you some measurements to write down on here so that if you are flipping back through your idea book and you want to recreate this, um, you'll know exactly how to do it. So we have our two base papers, which are fun printed, and then the one sheet that will cut apart that has the numbers on the back and prints on the front side. And then we have our Easter sticker underneath here. So this is a pretty simple cut guide. Um, I am going to suggest when you do it, it's always best to start with some of the skinnier pieces. So we're going to start and um, cut off the edge pieces. And um, for some of you, I know, have a challenge with your trimmer. So my trimmer is actually lined up right now. I don't know what the subtlety is. Sometimes I can see my cut line by where I have been cutting. Sometimes it's not the same as the dotted line. 
sometimes, I don't know if it's the way the mat sits in there or what, but um, do pay attention to where your cut has been, not necessarily the dotted line, so that you can line that up and get these um, little half inch pieces cut down the center. And then we'll go ahead and just work the rest of our way across, cutting these uh, pieces apart. You guys have Easter traditions. Do you always know that you'll have photos? Um, it's kind of waned a little bit for me. There have been years we'll go to my mom. Um, I will admit when my kids were little, it happened a little bit easier. Um, they'd have egg hunts or whatever. And then COVID hit. I know we didn't have a great Easter that year. And then they just got older. And then sometimes they're at their dad's. So the only tradition I truly have is that they will get an Easter basket with stuff whenever they do find it. Okay, so here are these pieces. So we need to cut these little banner shapes out. Um, there is, you can do this on your trimmer. What I prefer to have, and I like to keep these at my desk, is just a pair of real scissors. And so these I probably got in some kit at Costco. As long as you only use them for paper and you don't let them roam around your house, um, they're still really good for paper. The reason why I like them is because it has a long edge. You know, I like our CM scissors. I love our microtip scissors. But when I'm cutting pieces like this, I like to make sure I can cut the full length with the blade. It keeps it straight so you're not having to move through. And so when I'm cutting these, I know I can cut the whole length of this in one snip all the way to the center. And it's going to be straight. I'm not having to move the scissors to get the full length. And so I find this is truly easier than using the trimmer. And then you're going to have these little pieces you can save. You might be able to find a place to tuck them into your layout. So I'm going to go through and cut all of these. And look at your comments for your Easter traditions. Yeah, Robin's the same as me. I have to make myself take photos to make sure I have something. And the kids know it. If they, if they want the Easter Bunny to come, they better smile for the one photo. And then I try to get a group shot. They're not always dressed up. The girls don't buy Easter dresses anymore. Shannon's saying her dog gets to hunt the eggs. That would, You know what? That would be funny to do. I should figure out if we could do that with the cats. We could hide little... Cat treats. I don't know that Gray Kitty would engage in the game, but I'm pretty sure Maxie would if he knew there was food to find. Um, sometimes we like to entertain ourselves by just throwing the little pebbles of the dry food that they get down the hallway and watching him run, kind of make him exercise, make him work for his pebbles. So you can see it's pretty easy to cut these if you have long scissors. And you can do your, you know, regular scissors also. You're just going to have to be a little bit more deliberate about, um, you can see our CM ones are a little bit short to get the full thing, so you'd have to move the scissors, and that means sometimes you can be a little bit crooked. You probably wouldn't notice it, but um, just one thing I like to keep close for things like that. And again, we have all these little pieces. So you can just keep them if you want to reuse them uh, for something else. And so that's all we need the trimmer for. Now it's just the ease of putting this together. Jenny is saying she does a court grown kiss. So Jenny, what do you put in these eggs? She's saying she puts in fabulous crap and prizes. I could probably, if I, I did cash, they would go hunt for that. Of course, I'll be gone this year. This is the problem. We keep being gone on spring break. Okay, so for to put this together, we have a couple of steps. We're going to adhere our um, banners along the top. We need to put a grass sticker along the bottom, and then we're going to put the striped strip. So you can start either way. I'll start with the sticker to throw at the bottom. These are pretty stiff, so it's fine. I think it's fine to just pull the whole thing off. And the way I adhere stickers, I'm right-handed. And so I'll hold it about here and let this kind of go over my arm so that I don't risk it falling down to the page. And then I just get the line straight to start 
and then just work my way down along the bottom. So I don't need a T ruler or anything because I'm just going straight along the bottom edge of the paper. <sighs> she says, so, okay, so some of these are gag gifts. So fabulous crap. She's saying like ketchup or mayonnaise packets, broken crayons, and then they're looking for the gold, which is, would be the candy and the money. That would be pretty funny. I'm gonna we're gonna have to do that next time we have a live get together. Trying to just make sure I get this corner started. I guess I could do that at Megan's house too. I could. I could see if she has any eggs and I could hide them for the kids. Okay, so there's my sticker. So I need to go across the top now with my banners. Go ahead and space these out. They are a little bit different sizes. Uh, they get a little bit smaller the longer. And then the green are uh, photo mat. So when I adhere these across the top, I'm gonna go three quarter inches off the edge Make sure I tell you that right. Yeah, so three quarters. So you want to use either your mat or your silicone mat, something to give you a start on the edge. And then I use repositional tape. One thing when I am adhering banners like this, I like to make sure I get tape on my corners. Um, you could pull your mat out, or I just make sure I go off the edge of the triangle close, somewhere where it's going to be covered by the same piece of paper. I'm going to adhere these in a row. And then I have the row. I'm going to adhere um, the half inch stripe piece up here across the top. Same thing, I put some repo tape on the back, same as a sticker, I just kind of drape it over my hand. And adhere that across the top. And line my paper back up, I shifted it a little bit. If you have trouble with your base paper, you can just do a dot of Repositional tape to keep it on the mat, or you can grab your silicone, your 12 inch silicone mat if you have one of those. A little bit more skip proof. And then my final strip across the top. And that's that. So for these photo mats, you know, they have suggested spots on there where you can put them. It's totally up to you. Um, one last tip I wanted to share with you um, when you're adhering the Easter title. So on your sticker sheet, you do have the letters E-A-S-T-E-R. I do suggest using the T-Ruler um, to get yourself lined up to make sure they did go straight across. And if you don't have one, Megan, I have links to this on Amazon. And then I want to center these. So I'm going to start with the center letters and I see where my six is. And then I'm going down about, I decided about two and three eighths. So it's like down to the 10 and then three little hash marks. What's kind of spacing I liked, you can choose. And so I'm going to start with adhering the S and the T on each side of this six, because that's my center point. These are stiff also. You can use a multi-purpose tool. You could also get in there with your hand. And I'm just spacing it, these on each side of that six. If you're a little bit off, it's fine. 
you know, the edge of my T really is kind of pretty close to the six, but, and then you can work your way out with the title. Just keeping track of your spacing as you go to make sure it is on par with what you want. It's true. I have, I have, when we used to do um, Easter egg hunts with the kids, we would find eggs months later outside with candy in them. And it's funny when you're hiding and you feel like you're, I mean, they're so obvious to find, but then they're not. And then you don't even see them for a while. So that puts my Easter title pretty centered across the top. And then you have um, plenty of other little stickers to kind of cluster around your photos. It's always a little challenging to put stickers on without the photos, but um, you can tuck a couple eggs down to the grass. Of course, a little bunny next to the mats. And um, for the Easter, you can put, you know, use the time sticker um, down here to the right or overlapping it somewhere where you want. So that is the way Simple Page Kit number four comes on its own. But let's hack it. Let's figure out how to do this with a different layout. My goal this year, as you know, is to recreate everything at least twice. And so grab your handout. I will also get this up on my blog. I'm, I don't even have last week's up there yet. I'm getting there. We're getting a little closer to getting things where I want them. But if you have your a pencil and your paper, I'm going to give you a little bit of measurement. So on one, two, and three, these are four inches by four inches. And we'll, I'll mention these again when I cut. And then the column for four, five, and six, these are three and a half inches wide. And then seven, eight, nine are also three and a half inches. And then we have half inch, half inch. If you didn't catch all that, just wait for the blog post or I'll, I'll mention them again when I cut. Um, but our going down, they're a little bit different. So four and seven are four and a half inches. Five and eight are four inches. And six and nine are three and a half. And so those get a little bit smaller, as you notice when we were going across it, hearing the Easter ones. Um, for our base papers, we have to create our base papers. And so I'm going to see how it works to use a four and three fourths um, measurement to cut. We're going to use an edge style punch to punch what would replicate the grass. I might actually still use grass um, and then trim that down. And um, I might be able to get my half inch strips out of that same piece of paper. So I hope you guys won't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm still using birds and blooms. I It's still out. It's still beside me. I still love it. I think it's my favorite set so far this year. I know I will have a lot of use for it. And I know it'll be pretty in this layout. So don't judge me. <laughs> if you guys have been tuning in, you know you've been seeing birds and blossoms with like every layout I've done lately as a power hour. And I think I did Simply Scrappy with it maybe last time. Um, they are releasing a simple page kit with every month. So January, February, March, April, they will um, sell them. Actually, they'll be nine number. So May will be kit number five. They're not identifying them just as months. Um, and I suspect we'll see kind of the sub holidays. You know, it was a way for them to offer us something for Valentine's, St. Patrick's, St. Easter without having real collections. I don't know what we'll see in May. I haven't seen a preview of it yet. Um, if you lived in Indianapolis, it would be the Indy 500 racing, which I would love. I don't think we'll see that. I think that's a little bit too niche. So, okay. So back to this. So what papers do I need? So this is where you'll spend most of your time deciding because the cut guide we know is easy. So as of now, I knew I wanted to use this print. So this is kind of my statement print. I wanted to feature it in one of the banners. I also like the back of this paper for the green. I thought the green would look well against the bottom with the edge cut. And so I think I can get the bottom and one of the banners out of this. And so I know I'm going to see both of these papers. Um, I, then I have this lovely orange tonal paper. I wish they would just give us full packs of tonals that have this texture. There's no design. It's so versatile. It just kind of shows the gradient. And I know I will use um, a banner set from here. The back side of this is the butterflies, which doesn't really go with this print. I think it'd be a little bit too distracting. So I'm just using the orange side. 
And then I think for the base papers, I was going through, and I think this yellow kind of gingham plaid, whatever you will call it, uh, would be enough of a neutral for the base. And then it's going to have the green, this, and this. And so then I need one more color for a banner. Um, it's subtle. It probably doesn't show up as much on camera. But this print does have a little bit of blue in there. So I thought the baby blue would pop that out. And so then the piece I have missing is the stripe across the top. And I'm a little bit torn by this because the stripe, I like the stripe in here. This is more brown. It has this brown tone in there. So if I use this, because this really goes more with um, some of the other bird prints and nest prints that are in the collection. Uh, so if I throw this brown up there, it might look a little disjointed. I don't know. I might still try it. The back of it is a real light green. Uh, it could go across the top. It's going to be subtle. I don't know about that. Um, if this stripe doesn't work, there wasn't... Um, trying to find my set. When I was looking through the collection, there's not too much more that I think I could get away with. I thought about making this whole thing with the tulips. Um, you might see that version pop up here because I think the tulips would look really pretty. That definitely, the tulips would go with the brown. The back of it is this blue tonal, so that would give me the stripes, the print, and a blue. Um, and then what did I have left in here? I just had to open a whole new pack of paper. Um, this brown could come through. I would not want to tie in the bird print in the tulips print. I would just choose one or the other. The birds definitely would go with it. Um, but I did use a bird print on one of the layouts I just showed you. So I thought I'd for sure be shamed if I did the birds again. So I'm trying to do something a little bit different. So it could be the brown. Um, and then what else we got in here? We already have the green out. The butterflies we already took off. The green. It would probably be more tonals. And I was going to have to dig into some of the tonal packs. And that's in the end why I didn't use this. Because I didn't give myself enough time to plan out like what I'd want for a base paper. I would probably use um, something neutral. Something a lighter brown. A light beige. You could even use cardstock. But that's where I would go if I was using that palette. Oh, I didn't want to put that away. Okay, I need the stripes back out just in case. I want to use that at the top. Uh, the tea ruler is from Amazon. I will share the link in the comments of this and put it in the blog post. Um, Megan and I have it on megantest.com under my favorite things. There's also a link to that. It's only like five or six dollars and very useful. Okay, so I'm gonna put my base papers to the top. I'm gonna leave my stripes for last. And I'm gonna start with uh, my prints and the green. And so since I know I wanna get this out of the same sheet of paper, I'm gonna start by cutting my bottom pieces and see how that works. And so I have two options I could use for this. I did pull out grass. If you have the grass BMC, it's kind of hard to find now if you don't have it. Um, but it would be pretty, or I thought Flourish Vine would be pretty. And I am going to have a good contrast because it's going to be the green popping against the orange. Um, the grass would definitely pop out. Um, Flourish Vine, you're going to see a little bit of the orange um, come through there. Uh, so what do you guys think? I was trying to find something different and not just use the same as grass and so that's what they had at the handout but I really do think it actually would look pretty on here um I don't know what I'm saying though anything I use is going to be pretty because it's a lovely set so why don't I use flourish vine we know what the grass um looks like on there so I need the border maker system um you can use your border punches too I don't have grass lands I must not have kept it for myself when you do punch this side um, neither one really matter about direction, but there is, I do feel like when I look at this print, I see a horizontal design to it. This one looks more vertical, and I know when I do the banners, I want um, my banners to be like this. And so I'm just going to 
um, flip it and cut this green edge because it doesn't really matter. You guys are giving good ideas for May. Mother's Day is an obvious one. Graduation. I do think we'll see graduation separate. Um, a separate little collection. A Memorial Day would be a good option, Judith. And the Indy 500 race is usually Memorial Day weekend. So, unless there's like rain. So that would work. For us race fans also. I've been to it a couple times. I usually listen to it on the radio if I'm home with nothing else to do. So I need to trim this down. I'm going to trim it down to, um, let's see, if I, I have to think about this for a minute. So if I did four and three fours, that's what the handout was. And I want two of those. That's going to be a nine and a half inches. And so I'm only going to have two and a half inches left. So I think I've already screwed up the measurement in my head. I might already have to use a separate sheet of paper or I would have to make this thinner. So I have two choices I can do here. If you know you want to use the same sheet of paper and you know you need a guaranteed at least three and a half inches for the banner, I could go ahead and cut three and a half inches off and I could punch both sides of what's left and just cut it in half. And so I'm not going to have as deep as a border, um, but I know I'm going to get all the pieces out of one. So why don't I show you how I would do that in case you really are wanting to get one sheet. So I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to cut three and a half inches. I'll save those to the side for my banners. I'm going to punch the other side of this. I'm laughing, Judy. You're right, Judy. I mean, this is this is not a subtle sell. I'm telling everyone you should order Birds and Blossoms, especially if you like birds, as I know your husband does and I do. I think the misnomer is, I probably said this last, whatever class I used it in last time, is I feel like the spring sets are more my outdoor vibe than the summer ones. And so I just wish that in the collection, they didn't always just say spring. Like, just throw some summer out there. And this is definitely a summer set to me. But then a lot of the mats will say spring. Okay, so now I want to cut this in half. This is going to be my two pieces at the base. So I can see that I'm about eight inches cut. So the reason why I had to think about it is like when you punch anything, you're losing part of your measurement. And so if I cut this to four and three fourths, four and three fourths, I realize it's going to have less than like two and a half left. So I'm going to back this up here. We're going to cut it in half at two inches, I'm two inches, four inches. And I should be pretty, they should be about the same. And they are about the same. Okay, then I need to cut my banners. So I know this is already three and a half. And so I'm going to go back to my cut guide. Um, the four inch ones, one, two, and three, um, you, we could cut those or leave those. They're just photo mats. So I wouldn't worry about doing that unless you really have your photos ready or you want to make them um, and just fit the design to that. And so I have two choices here. I have three and a half inches for both columns for four or five and six, seven, eight, nine, and they're all going to be the same length, a four and a half, a four, and a three and a half. So four and a half. Four. And that will leave me three and a half. So I'm going to banner cut those after I cut the rest of them. And so my other choice was... No, you guys, you've already messed this up. So I have to think about this. So this is a problem. I knew this before I got on camera, but I have to do something messed up on camera. So the problem is, is we want three different papers. We want four and seven to be the same paper, five and eight to be the same paper, six and nine to be the same paper. Now I've already like cut three of those, which is fine. I can either, um, what I would do to fix this, if I'm going to make it exactly as shown and not just adapt it, is I just want two of these to match and I'm going to have an extra piece of paper. And so I can't obviously make the big one. I can't make any of these bigger. So these are not going to be four and seven. 
Um, but I think this would be pretty in the middle. Um, this because this is the print on the back side. But those were four inches. I think this is three and a half. Yeah, these are gonna have to be the three and a half ones, but I could just alternate the way these lay if I want the print in the middle. So um to fix my error. So I want these to be six and nine. And so if you're making this like this at home, what I would probably do is make notes to myself. As usually I remember, like, I know I want this to be the floral print. And so before I ever cut, I've already identified what the papers are on here. And it's just that double check. My mind goes a lot of different ways. And so then I have to have as many clues as possible to keep it on track or it's going to just start going AWOL. I mean, it's just life. I'm only 46. I don't know what to blame it on. I haven't hit menopause or anything like that. I'm just going to say it's a busy life. So I can sit and think right here. I have the orange and then I have the baby blue. And so what do I want on the outside? What do I want on the inside? Um, I like the orange better than the blue. And so I could say I want those to be the longer one. And so I want this orange tonal to be four and seven. Can we see more of that paper? And then we'll keep the baby blue for five and eight. Okay, so now let's do that. So then what do I need to do? I need basically, a, you know, six, seven inches by four inches cut in half for the baby blue. So I can cut this down to four inches. So I'm basically cutting my two pieces here out of the middle. So I have the four inches and I need three and a half and three and a half. I have those, and I have to fix this. I need to cut this down to three and a half. And I have a little extra piece, which if you've ever watched me scrub with Power Hour or whatever, this is probably what will end up tucked in besides like the journaling and the boxes. I don't throw things like that away. It's very valuable. <laughs> okay, so I have those. And now I need to cut the orange. So I'm going to remind myself on my notes, the orange is four and seven. So I need a four and a half inch cut. Um, I can flip it over. I'm not using the butterflies, but I think, do I need to preserve a direction one way or the other? I'm going to cut a strip. Am I more likely to use the butterflies like this or this? Um, I don't know. It probably doesn't matter. So I'm going to cut four and a half inches. And then I'm going to flip this and cut three and a half and three and a half. And so now Jenny's talking about the 500 museum. That is, I've been to that field trip. We've been to the motor speedway where you can kiss the bricks. It's definitely a, I think it's a fourth grade field trip. We got it in literally right before COVID. with the twins. Okay, so this is extra. This is that extra piece I cut again that probably will end up matting a journal box or something. So I have all my banner pieces. I have the base papers of these. I have to decide about my strip. So I need to cut my banner ends. I'm going to remind myself, I should have done this ahead of time. So how deep are my cuts? You know, if you want the banners to have the same depth, you know, I'm sitting here on my mat. This was um, a four and a half inch and it's cut up to about three fourths. And the T ruler can help you too, if you're not sure. That's about three fours. Okay. So, what I would do is on the back side of wherever you're going to cut, find a ruler, a centering ruler, your zero ruler. If you use the mat, you can figure out which line's coming through the middle. And my middle is going to be right between these two. And I just want to make a little mark three quarters in. 
And that's where I'm going to cut up my banner. I'm pretty close. I think banners, as long as they're like mostly okay, mostly centered, it works for me. So the center of this is still in the middle of here. Following that line all the way up, finding the middle of this one. Making a pencil lead mark. In the back side, again, we're making our pencil mark on the back, or you can erase it off the front. That's true, too. I, I could, um, that's a good idea, too. If you use that's why it's helpful to have extra lines around here. Gail's saying if I use this piece that came off of there, so that's even easier. And if you really need the line, you could trace the line. So good idea, Gail. Thanks for chiming in. See, we knew those pieces would be helpful or something. Basically, you can make yourself a little template, and then you don't have to guess so much about where your lines go. And you can cut along the line. And then you don't have to worry about where you see, like, can you see your line or not? Or if you have the three in one ribbon tag, that's what this was made for, except it doesn't go this wide. So if you're making this like a smaller version, you could use it, but I think it goes up to two and a half. We have our pieces, so now it's time to put this together, and then we'll decide how we like the top stripe. It's so messy. I don't know how some of these other girls do it that, like, don't make a mess on camera. I don't know how to not scrap with, like, everything all around me. I'm going to dry fit my pieces first, put them in their spots. And I am fine with, I do want that print in the middle, and I'm fine with it being shorter in the middle. It's just a little bit of a different dimension rather than having them in order. So what do I think about the stripe? Let me cut a half inch. I'm not sure, you guys can always tell, I'm not sold on this. I feel like the brown, or maybe it's too much blue for what's left in the layout. Now, the difference would be, If I brought more blue into the layout, it would tie that blue in. As is, it feels like it's too blue heavy for me because there's no blue at the bottom of the page. That can be fixed a little bit with your mats and the embellishments or the photos. 
So the nice thing too about our variety mats is I could trim these down. I know I like this one. I already have pulled stop. Everything grows with love. It ties in all the colors. It ties in with the prints. Um, that is a pretty matte collection. You know, the clouds. You know, so I don't know that I would use rain or shine with all of this, but if I did, you can see by bringing the blue down here, if it fit appropriately, then it makes the blue at the top feel a little bit more okay. Um, I, of course, I like this one because it, it's going to tie that print down. And this one, it's a beautiful day. This would bring the blue down. This would bring the blue down. You know, but if I chose one like Sunshine and Fresh Air, I could matte it in blue to bring the blue down. Um, but otherwise, it, it feels too heavy with that blue at the top. So that's a little bit about kind of my color choices. Um, yes, I could also pull the blue in at the bottom, and I could maybe do that with a border sticker too. I haven't even been through my stickers yet. So... Um, Birds and Bloom does have a lot of blue in the titles, so the blue could be pulled around like that. Or I have these. So I have a real thin flower one that would pull the flowers down, and it does give me that blue base. So that would definitely tie it in. Or I could pull in some of the... I have some birds punched in here I didn't use. I thought when I did Power Hour I was going to use punched cardinals and it didn't happen. I went a completely different way. But that's why I have these in here. And then, yeah, we have the butterflies are blue. Birds would be pretty. Those are really pretty, actually. And they have some flower to bring down blue flower. The Cardinals don't bring in any blue. Of course, I have this one. Um, this is a Birds and Blossoms collection. It's not a kit. It's a full collection. It's four pieces. It has the paper, the mats, the stickers, and the borders. There's no separate embellishments, um, but we have a lot in the stickers. And yes, if you want to order it, you need to get all four pieces. And if I were you, I would get an extra paper pack because there is a lot of tonal in here. And so it's easy, and you'll need it to stretch out all the other pieces, the mats. You're going to have more mats and borders and stickers. You're going to run out of paper like I did today and have to open a second pack. So you might as well just get two packs if you order it. And then the borders, this is a border set that has one of each. And so if you want to make two layouts, then you have to have a two, double set of borders. I don't have a double set over here yet. Um, but I could. I kind of like these flowers because they do tie in, you know, it feels like it's appropriate sitting on the green and it brings in the blue and it ties in with the print a little bit more than the tulips. Oh, I just love this set. I take a lot of pictures. I did um, not so much last year, but the year before I walked a lot and I went to some places to walk quite a bit and I would always take pictures of whatever it was outside. And so I know I have a lot of pictures to print and use with these. So I think that in the end, my stripe could work. Do I still wish it had orange in it and not brown? Yes. Um, my, the other alternative is to use a border up there. I'm going to kind of lose a border or anything on top of there. Um, I could also just do strips of paper. Um, like I said, this is a subtle green. I think this is too light to go as a standalone border strip. Um, you could just play around with your, your color choices. The nice thing about the stripes paper is it ties in pieces together um, for that. And then you could switch out. You know, if I wanted, you could, um, like Deborah suggested, you could use um, green at the bottom or a green for a banner. Um, because I have green here, green here, I could pull out a green that works. Um, I could also get dig out, I would, if you wanted to pull in a yellow, if you really wanted something a little bit warmer, um, 
you have orange here, yellow here is really going to wash out a lot of the blue. Um, or you could go find some of the tonal packs and find something to work in also. So that is how I would hack this layout to make it again. So pretty simple once you choose your papers um, for that. And of course, once you get your photos on there, embellishments, it, it will, it really will tie it all together. I don't know. I'm still not, I might not glue that down. I mean, I'm looking at my layout now on the monitor, not on my screen. And I just don't love it. I don't love it. I don't know what I wish it was, but I wish it was different. I'm going to have to think about this one. Um, I think part of that's because I don't have the blue back on there. So if I pulled the blue back in, I will for sure have to bring in blue uh, to keep that at the top. I wonder if I could find some photos too. I guess it's going to be a mystery. How will this get taped down? I think the blue, I like this border down here, but then it doesn't have blue in it. Well, you can, I guess it does have blue. You just can't see it so much on the screen. Maybe I just have to accept it looks prettier in person than it does on the screen because you can't see some of the subtleties in it. Um, yeah, I could just punch another border or something to add cardstock at the top. You know, you could punch an edge, the clouds. I could spin my wheel of, of punches and see what I have. The whole point of the paper or stripe up here is to tie it all together. And so how are you going to tie this together without it? Um, I could also tie in uh, maybe a little bit more of the yellow here and maybe like a two layers of cardstock. I could do a green. I think green actually. So if I wanted to, I could just cut a strip of, of the bottom down here and put the green at the top. Let me see what this looks like. That's going to pull the bottom up to the top with the green. I easily could just stick with the green in the absence of having anything else that I love. Um, it doesn't have quite the same punch of color. I, mean, I really did want a stripe, but there's not one. I even was pulling through, like I went through the Cherish pack. We had a, a Cherish pack that had a stripe, but it has pink in it. So it definitely wasn't going to work. but. It is a lot of green, Jenny. But, you know, I love green. Green's my favorite color. <laughs> Although I'm guessing my pictures, whatever they are, are going to have a lot of green in there because they're nature. So, um, to be determined. I might have to stare at this one for a minute um, before I decide completely. Or I could go through and cover up the brown. I think by the time I got the um, pictures on here, um, we'd stop like focusing on the small details, right? This is what we do. This is why layouts that really are simple cuts take an hour and a half <laughs> because of the paper. Okay, well, we've talked about that. We'll see where, where I end up on, but let's move on. We're gonna talk about card kits for a minute. Sometimes we need something easy on the brain to work on. We are going into the season of cards, I feel like. To figure out where I put my cards. So we have occasions coming up. We have Easter, we have spring, we have graduation. People are getting married. People are always having babies and people are always dying. So that is the process of life. It's a cycle of life. Um, I like to send cards. I'm not always as good at, I mean, I think about it more than it actually happens. Um, but when I was in high school, I was at um, kind of a church youth conference for the weekend. And I met a friend down there and she lived 
several hours south of me. And this is before the day and age of social media. And she made an impact on my life because she would periodically just send cards. And I was like, it is so fun to get a real card in the mail. And I think that's really where the seed is planted for me um, to try to be cognizant of that, especially in this digital world. Who doesn't like to get a card in the mail? However, I don't like spending $5 on a card. Um, you can buy kind of the cheap sets of generic cards, but they're not as cute or fun. But Creative Memories has kind of answered that a little bit. So I have two methods I use now. One, I buy cards for my customers that create them and they sell them. Um, I know a lot of you are card makers and they're gorgeous. I'll just never really be a from scratch card maker. I may show me the kit card maker. And so a week or so or two ago now, I got a little bit more organized. So this is the polka dot card pod from Creative Memories. It has a zip top and it flips open and it came with these rainbow tabs and it came with all these word dividers. And I've always had a tote of cards, a similar thing I got at the Target dollar spot one year in my cabinet. And so whenever I needed a card for someone, I would flip through looking for what was appropriate and it didn't ever really know what I had. So I love being able to have them identified of like what kind of card they are um, to save me a little bit of time in my search. And so I went through and sorted out all the cards I had into this. Um, I actually have more in another one um, that are at the ready. And so whenever, you know, the kids need a card for a birthday, I need to send a card to someone with encouragement, or maybe they're not feeling very well or a thank you. I can just pull something out and send them. And it gives it a handmade touch without being expensive and without being generic. So I, I know most of you are familiar with the card kits, but I know not all of you are. So just as a brief recap, Creative Memories for a while has given us 12 pack of cards. And one of the current ones is um, from the heart. It's a sympathy kit. Unfortunately, sympathy is probably one of the ones I do send. Like I am much more intentional about making sure a sympathy card goes out. And these are really pretty ones to have. They're just really pretty. Um, and I like the sentiments. You know, they're just kind of basic. Um, and I kind of like that they're blank inside because I'll admit, I don't usually read the words inside of a card someone sends me. I will read what they write. And so instead of the card company printing a sentiment for me inside of it, I'll just write my own. Um, so I like having these on hand. So this is one you can get currently. I have some card kits also in stock in my shop that aren't online anymore. Some of my favorites have been um, G Golly. Here's a couple of there. That's kind of a retro theme. I love these. And I thought it was sold out. And I found um, nine boxes in the garage the other day. I'm feeling bright. I have these for sure. They are very bright, fun-loving cards. Again, this was a 12-pack. But not everyone wants to make the investment in a 12 pack of cards. And so they came out with a little card trio kit. And so one of them is Sweet on You. I have one of them left that didn't get sent for Valentine's Day. As three cards for that. You can buy that one online. Um, and Welcome Baby just came out. Um, so I'm going to put this one together. And then Something Blue just came out. I actually sold what I have, so I can't put together. But it's kind of a wedding anniversary trio. And then there's some that you can get as gifts. And so NSD is one of the ones that is a gift pack right now. You can buy it in here in Advisor. Um, it, it's one of the gifts I'm giving, depending on levels of purchase this month. So I'll show that one. And same with Bold and Slate. I'm going to show you that one at the end. I have a little bit of a, a deal for you to get that one free if you want. So this is Welcome Baby. So for all of our card kits, whether it comes with 3 or 12, Come with the instructions front and back. And then you'll have your cards, your envelopes. Um, the Welcome Baby, even our little colored envelopes, which is super cute. I am better, too, about um, cards for people with babies. More intentional about recognizing that milestone. 
like thinking of you, I will think of you. I just don't always do a very good job of telling you I'm thinking of you when I know, when I know you're going through kind of a hard time in life. Getting the card sent. So then I have all these pieces and I'm just going to sort them by number. So one, two, and three. So do a quick sort of your pieces. The best part about these kits is they're only $5.50. So you get all three cards for less than $2 each which is you cannot buy cards that look like this for that much. And then I recommend using repositional tape. And it's always helpful to use a silicone mat with repositional tape. So whether you have the large one, the border one, or the card one, any of them will work. For this one, I can put my card together onto the base before I have it. So, and then I just have to follow the instructions as I go, you know, adhere one B to one A. And then I'm gonna put my baby, this is so cute, B-A-B-Y on there. This must be the trend. So did you guys, have you seen the new Welcome Baby collection? It's definitely a little bit of a non-traditional color scheme. They did give it some blue and purple paper. Um, I'm curious for those of you that have people having babies, is this more of the trend? More of the color scheme? I know we kind of went through the beige baby trend and maybe now they're starting to add in a little bit more color, not just beige. So there's one that's done. And then we have kit number two. Oh, I can put that on the base. Oh, you're right. I did put it on there. So this is what happens when I talk and walk. I put the A and the Y on the wrong. This is why you also use repo tape. Some advisors host events like cards and cocktails or something. I'm like, I'd be screwed trying to chat it up and get pieces on the right spot at the same time. Okay, now there we go, B-A-B-Y. Thank you, Robin. Thank you guys for watching me. Card number two. Yep, looks like I just layer these top to bottom. This one's a little easier to get in the right spot. I actually do like to do card kits. Usually if I have one to put together as a demo, I watch TV while I do it. It is pretty mindless as long as you can use the commercials to make sure you're putting your B-A-B-Y in right spots. So there's two. And then we have three. Um, these are also, you know, could definitely put them together with kids. Um, Cooper used to put my card kits together, even when he was like 11 or 12. And they're simpler now. Back then, some of them were a little bit more intricate. And maybe his wouldn't be quite on, you know, quite level in some spots. But they're even simpler now than they were back then. When they first came out, they really honed in on... Keep maintaining the cute, but also keeping the simple. So there's hello, little one. I do think it'd be fun to host. Um, just a social event to do the cards. It gives you something to do while you chat. So that's those. Super cute for the baby. And now I'm going to do... The NSD one, so if you're an advisor, you can buy this one. If you're a customer, I'm going to give you this free with a certain level of purchase. I am going to make a deal for you guys today. The NSD one, some of them come with bonus pieces. The baby did not, but some, most of them, the regular kits do come with a pack of bonus pieces that you can use to make additional cards, or you can... Um, 
use them in your scrapbook. So that is a whole extra value. If they just sold this piece alone, this would probably be like $253 for this little kit. Um, and the whole kit card kit was only $550. So definitely it's a good value. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sort these. I haven't even put these together yet ever either. It's new to me also. Uh, you're right, Angie. That may have been, Angie's saying the bonus for the babies may have been the colored envelopes. That is probably a good guess. I'm going to do little piles in the front. This one has a few extra pieces. More pieces, I should say, than the baby one. Okay. And then find my instructions over here. Here's number one. I tip my hat, my cap to you. Yeah, it would be a good thing to share with if you guys have any do have social groups, crafting or whatever that is. My social groups are on the bleachers at school, so card making isn't exactly conducive. <laughs> Uh, but it's funny, like, we're getting ready to start AAU season, and I know we'll be sitting there waiting between games, but um, I don't think there's quite appropriate to bring in my table, set up my table and chairs. We can all make cards while we wait for the next game. So this one's super cute because it's um, giving me different colors for the mushroom caps. That's what these little extra bonus pieces were. Not bon I keep saying bonus. They're not bonus. They're part of the card. They're just additional. I tip my cap to you. Super cute. That on my base. This reminds me, now I can't think of it. I shouldn't even mention it because I can't think of it. And we were in the car the other day and um, Cooper asked me why something was called something. I feel like it was close to the word cap. I don't remember what it was now. I could share, but it was like just one of those words that doesn't mean the same thing anymore. Okay, for this one, I want to, this is a horizontal orientation. And it's going to sit like this. And I want to make sure I get tape on these triangle corners. So I'll make sure I'm on the right end of the card that's going to get covered. And I'll put my repo coming off the edge there so additional tape just stays on the card base. Looks like I should have, oh, here it is, a brown. And this one to overlap. So having the words overlap the fox a little bit. Oh, Angie's saying cat means lie to teenagers. So no cap. I haven't heard that one yet. That's not what he was saying, but that's funny. So I tip my lie to you. That's what this would mean if I gave it to one of the teenagers. Now it's it's bothering me what he was saying. We were on the way back from the little municipal airport by us because he's about to start flight lessons. And so we had to go down there and give them his birth certificate and get him signed up to use the software where he can schedule his flights. And we were driving back from there. So I feel like it had, to, it had something to do with driving. Kind of bother me. Uh, if I asked him when he got home, he's probably not going to remember either. Okay, well, I'm out of this. Is what happens to you go through a lot of repo tape. But I have more. A whole nother dispenser. That's two, and then one more to go. I should have timed myself how long this takes to put these together. 
Brown's going to go on the orange. I am a little bit more generous on the cards with tape than I am um, scrapbooking because there will be no page protector adding extra reinforcement. And then these are already put together. So flowers and friend. So I can already see in my bonus that usually they give us additional sentiment. So in here, so this one says, hi friend. That's the one that they show on there. And um, I could swap it out for sending a little cheer um, if I wanted for this card. And then the first one, if I didn't want to use, I tip my cap to you. Maybe I didn't want to, I wanted to give this to a teenager or not have that connotation. Um, I could do, you're a real fun G. Fun guy? No, real fun guy. <laughs> not G. So if you're going <laughs> to, I was like, fun G, fun guy. Um, you're a real fun guy. If you were giving it to a guy, you could put that one on there. And then this one, the wild about you, you could switch out to have a wild birthday. So that could be a birthday card too. You could definitely use cheap adhesive as long as you know it's going to uh, stick to it. So these are cute also. So I was giving these away with my gift book purchase for NSD. I, I leveled up the gifts. So this was... Um, I think if you hit 200, that's because you're getting a lot of gifts in between. Um, I give the gifts at the 100, 150, 200 level. I have one more to show you and then a little bit of a card deal. If you haven't purchased anything of these. So those are the three NSD 2024 ones. So super cute with that too. And then the other gift one, so um, the, this one is Bold and Slate, which I put together. This was um, an advisor exclusive one also. I gave away before I went through the NSD one. So if you're interested in purchasing for me and um, you like to get free stuff with it, I'm going to offer a special. So if you spend $50 in cards, so you could do the multiple kits, the mini kits, or the card pod, um, I will give you the bold and slate for free with that. Um, so I do have them posted in my group, Facebook group. The website's not quite ready. It's so close. I'm having to um, test through some payment options right now before I let everyone in. Um, but you can see how fun these are to have. And then if you're going to have the cards, you can, you know, go to Michael's or somewhere and buy, you know, a shoebox thing to put cards in. Or you could spend a little bit more and get one with polka dots and dividers and a Ziploc. Ziploc, oh my gosh, I can't even talk now. A zippered top uh, to keep them in here all sorted. And it does come with the stickers you can choose to put on your dividers. So I will post that special in my shop group, which you should be able to see the link here on on Facebook for that. So, um, and then you need to go next time you're out running errands, you need to put on your list that you need to stop at the post office and get the stamps. Because if you don't have the stamps available, odds are you're going to make the card right in the card and then it's just going to sit there because you don't actually have the stamp to put it in your mailbox. And if you want to go through all that effort for that, so get a roll of stamps to to put them in there. And these are also good gifts. So I've given card gifts. I've actually put them together um, to give to my grandma. She can't see very well anymore, but she always has been great about sending cards and she can't see, but she'll still try to write in them a little bit. And so if I have the card already put together, you know, my mom will help her go through her cards and find one that's appropriate. And then she'll write a little note. So you can put them together and also give them as a gift to someone who maybe likes to send cards or would give them, but um, they're never going to put them together um, on their own or whatnot. So, yeah, it's so fun to be organized, have cards, play with fun things. I like the cards, too, because it's a little bit of a melt break. You don't have to actually think about what paper you're going to use and where. Uh, you can just put them together. So this has been fun to chat with you guys. Um, I'm going to hang up and go figure out if I'm going to put the stripes on there or what I'm going to put on there. And... 
um, if I could post it today or I might wait, I might give myself the weekend to decide if I can find photos to put on there. Cause I think if I could put photos on there and then truly finish out like with the variety mats and the embellishments and stickers and pull it all together, um, it would probably look a little bit better for that. So if you do make the layout, you can, I'd love to see it. You can post it in the scrapbooking ideas and inspiration group. Um, you can tag me if you want. Um, and I'll see that. Yeah, uh, so Mary Jo's asking if I put all the cards by the cards, and I'm not totally sure you're at. I'll message you to make sure. Um, the cards for sorting the cards into your pod, I sort them into whatever category um, it goes to, but I put them all together. So, like, some of them are mixed. So, like, the sympathy. Um, a lot of those went into my sympathy tab. Some of them went into my, the thinking of you. And so I just look at the card itself and the, you know, in what situation would I send this, um, or a thank you or whatnot. Some of them are generic and I just have a category at the beginning that was just kind of a, a blank, put whatever, just pull something out. So. Okay. So I have one more week next week before I go on spring break. Um, so I have to think about what I'm going to do in general, everything I do live will end up on uh, YouTube. Last week's is still not on YouTube. I have to go find the recording and get it there. But you, you've all heard about how my week went. So we're, we're still in catch up mode. And then it'll all end up on my blog too. And the blog has been moved over. So I am in website transition. And so now it's, I'm not, I'm not in my um, shadow site anymore. I can put real content out there. And so you'll see my website start to evolve also as we get these things set up. And I'm so hopeful that by next week when I talk to you, I can send you to the shop to shop. But I, that might be optimistic. Spring break was my goal. But it's always hard to kind of work out the kinks and the bugs. And I want to make sure that it works easily before I send you all there. Uh, the BMC for the hack layout was Flourish Fine. So it is a more recent one sold out from um, Creative Memories, but I'm sure we have similar. I'd have to, to look and see. Um, for sure, if you don't have it, this one, the spring leaves that came with Burnt and Blossoms, was, ha definitely has kind of a flourish vine effect. It's different, but it's it's kind of viney. Um, so that this would be a good one. I didn't use this either because I didn't want to be shamed for using the same punch that I just used. I don't think you guys would ever shame me. But that's what my kids are always saying when they're like, don't want to be caught in something. They're like, don't judge me. Don't shame me. Okay. Well, I will see you guys all next Friday. I hope you have a good weekend. And I look forward to seeing your layout. So see you all later. Bye.